You can call me the king of shop lights, okay? Now this is only a small portion of my collection because most of my collection has been trashed. And if any of you have worked on cars, around airplanes, boats, anything mechanical in a shop for any length of time, you're gonna be laughing as I go through this because you say, oh yeah, you're right, Ken, I know what you're talking about. But shop lights have, you know, have become one of my biggest pet peeves, really. I mean, some of this junk we get, we get, you know, pushed at is just ridiculous. And this is this is number one right here. This is number one on my pet peeve list. Are these halogen shop lights that you can buy at any auto parts or hardware store? Why do I hate these so much? For one thing, when you work around them, they get so hot you start to sweat. And the other thing, if you just bump them, literally, you just bump them, and that. Five to ten dollar bulb burns out, and then if you go buy cheap bulbs like at Harbor Freight, they last for about one hour. Here's one that you know it gets bumped, and that 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 bulb falls out. So, you know, I think about about four or five years ago, I kept this one because it had a pretty red color. You can kind of tell I like red around here, right? But I don't use it. I just kind of look at it. But these have all gone in the trash. All these kind of shop lights I had four or five different small ones and ones that you could hang under the car and what a waste. But backing up even before these was this shop light here. Now I think I bought this shop light in about 1972 with a retractable cord. Now this was state of the art, you know, back then. And this is what we had. We had this little holder, you know, we put the standard light bulb in and then of course you had to have this guard to keep from burning yourself or breaking the bulb, but once again, you know, you drop these or run into them and the, the bulbs burn out. You could go and get special shock resistant bulbs, but you know, you try to hang these somewhere and they'd always turn the other way, all right? You'd turn the other way and the light wouldn't go where you want it, you know, and uh, come on. Now I've kept this one just for nostalgia <laughs> because I've had it so long. And then of course, there's the ever present clip light. You can buy these real cheap. They actually work quite well because you can clip them on something and you can kind of direct the light where you want it. But you end up having the cord that you got to trip over. And, uh, you know, these once again burn out. They just, you know, they burn out way too often. So, uh, you know, along came the fluorescent shop light. And I remember this, this was probably 20 years ago when, when I started seeing these show up quite a bit. Wow, a fluorescent shop light. You know, we could get one of these and when it wouldn't get hot and of course probably won't burn out unless you drop it real bad but you turn the light on you know and you have to bang it a little bit and then you wait and then it finally comes on and then what does it light up i mean literally you know if you hold it about three feet from where you're working <laughs> you can get something to light up so very disappointed very disappointed with the fluorescent shop lights i've given those up and all but this one have gone to the trash and then there's any number of flashlights. And you know how bad these are. You know, half the time you're banging on them, poor contacts, poor switches, and very poor light, okay? But, oh wow, we had LED flashlights come out a number of years back, and I thought, well, there's hope yet. But these things were so weak, they were worse than these. You couldn't even hardly see in front of your feet while you're walking down the trail. And of course, they had multiple connect, you know, switches so you get bright and dim, but bright was dimmer than even the one with two C-cell uh, batteries. So about the only flashlight I ever worked with that I really enjoyed was one like this. It had the big battery, you know, you could set it down, you could swivel the head. But once again, the light was kind of, you know, kind of too isolated. I wanted something with with more lighting. And then, you know, then I got real excited when you started seeing these LED shop lights come out. Wow, you know, this was going to be the answer. So I bought one of these. I think this was about $40 when I bought this a number of years ago. And um, wow, isn't that bright? <laughs> Once again, I had to get like six inches away with this. So there's another $40 down the drain. So. You know, I've tried, I've tried other types of lights. The little headlamps are pretty good, but they kind of, after a while, they kind of hurt your forehead, leave a little dent in there. But you know, I, just about two years ago, I said, this is ridiculous. I'm gonna figure out, and guess what? 
You want to know what gave me the inspiration? What really gave me the inspiration for coming up with what I call the ideal shop work light was the movie lights, the LED movie lights I was filming with. And I've got one shining on me right now. And the problem though, those are very expensive. So, you know, most people aren't gonna go out and pay 150 to 250 dollars for a good shop light. But I wanted to give you this background. This is part two in this series on, you know, trying in the search, in the hunt, in the hope of finding the ideal shop light. In part three, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on these movie lights that I use. You'll get to be able to see uh, some of the lights we're using and how we can adjust the light. And then that will lead into the next part where we're gonna talk about the inspiration for some of the new shop lights that I've come up with. And you got a chance, you know, you got a chance to see in part one, the recent one that I've been using working in and around engines, and, that, and that's amazing. So stay tuned for the next episode.